in the backseat of a moving car. I'm cut loose from the city. The city watched me pass with sharp neon eyes. The night has covered the skyscrapers in silver. Every big brick wall is covered with graffiti. The image of a green V with a syringe in the middle. Repeated over and over. V for Valkyrie, the drug. The red and blue of the police car's lights flash on the white snow. Something go bang in the night. And the sound is close enough to a gunshot to take me back to the beginning. My last meeting with Alex before I went undercover. Sitting in a crummy diner. And him sitting across from me. He smiled. He was a friendly bear. But I seen it in his eyes. We hadn't been on the side of the winning side for a long time. And he was playing a safe talking shop. To get to the source, you know, we need to get to Jack Lupino. For that, you need to get the trust of some of them small timers in the Punchinello family. Joey and the Rigolaros, Finitos, Lupino's number one man, and Vinny Garniti, all the wise guys. It must have been there, the sign of things to come. Clear as the fear in Alex's eyes and the darkness of the coffee he was drinking, and the way my gun dug painfully into my side. But we were blind to it then, closing our eyes to it, refusing to see it. Later that night, I was a DA, special agent, a race from the vast network of databases and replaced with a new version of me. Jack Payne, the career criminal with a mile-long rap sheet. A couple of days ago, it all came crashing down. The bad things came like a winter storm. Pushed over the edge, I found myself in the cold no-man's land between right and wrong. No road signs, on a crash course with the mafia, with nothing to lose to. The NYPD was trailing me by the dotted line of empty shell cases that I left behind. I was trying to look for the answers, but every gunshot, instead of bringing closure, was just a hole with more questions leaking out. A spread labyrinth of questions, like a pool of blood spreading on the snow. The car stops in the traffic lights. Outside, the lights paint snow red like the whole city was in flames. But inside, in the shadows of the car, it's all done in blues. I know I'm lying to myself. No amount of painkillers can keep this ache away. No lie can hide it. I'm not really in the back seat of this car. I didn't start in the diner with Alex. It started three years ago in my bedroom. And I ain't left that room since. The killer was dead at my feet on the floor. Meet me, my baby, laying on the bed, bullet holes like rubies in her chest. Our baby, our baby's cry cut short, the absence of it heavy in the air. That gunshot like a exclamation mark to end it all. The answer to all my questions had already run out a long time ago. Even its echo was gone. The gun was fused to my hand from that moment on. The room inside me. That room inside me. Everywhere I go. Especially now as the city presses close to the windows of the car. Its monstrous heartbeat under the tires. My squinted eyes in the rearview mirror, my hands numb and held awkwardly behind my back. Everything that came after that room is a hopeless mess, a chaotic swirl, rising nausea that tastes like rust in my mouth.
that was all dead. The final gunshot was an exclamation mark to everything that had led to this point. I released my finger from the trigger and then it was over. To make any kind of sense of it, I needed to go back three years, back to the night the pain started. The NYPD, Manhattan, Midtown North Precinct, right up in what you call Hell's Kitchen. So my partner, Alex, he said, so when are you coming to work for me, detective? <laughs> I was like, man, you'll make me work undercover in some hell hole. I'm sorry, Alex, uh, but me, me and the baby come first, man. See? This right here? It's my last smoke. It's bad for the baby, you know? He said, that's right, man. That's you, a regular Boy Scout. I said, see you later, man. He said, we still on for poker Thursday? I say like taking candy from a baby boy. <laughs> Life was good, you know, the sun setting on a sweet summer day, the smell of freshly cut lawns, the sound of children playing outside, a house across the river on the Jersey side, a beautiful wife and baby girl. You know, it was the American dream come true. I would come in the house every day, honey, I'm home. Come on over here. But you know, the thing about dreams is they got a nasty habit of going bad when you're not looking. And that day the sun went down with practice bravado and twilight crawled across the sky, full of foreboding. Mimi? Babe? Where you at? I didn't like the way the show started, but they giving me the best seat in the house, front row center. What? I saw some graffiti on the wall. One of those V's with the syringes. It was a map of things to come. It was ugly. Tattooed on the wall. The poison syringe. A magic tag full of diabolical meanings. The phone rang. I pick it up. Listen, somebody broke into my house. Call 911. The voice just said, is anyone home? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody broke into my house. They're still here. You have to. Then I heard, good. I'm afraid I cannot help you. Who is this? I said, and they hung up on me. I went to call police. When I got an answer, I heard a scream and gunshots come from upstairs. So I made my way up. Me, 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 me. Three shots rang off. I tried to open the bathroom door. I couldn't get it open. Someone was proud of us against the door, and that's when this guy ran out on me. He looked like some kind of cokehead, man. You know, dirty, grungy, stinking. He popped out. First thing I did was put two in him. Pop, pop. I ain't even thought about it. I heard somebody else, I'm gonna hurt you, I'm gonna hurt you, it's coming, death is coming, you're gonna die. So I go into the, uh, my baby's room, and a cradle was knocked over, and blood was everywhere. I saw this guy in the corner saying, the flesh of fallen angels. I tried to ask him why, but he came at me with that gun and a knife in his hand, and I put about three or four in him. And that's when I seen him. That's when I seen my baby. That's when I seen me, me. Laid out on the bed, covered in blood. Those beautiful eyes, completely lifeless. That was three years ago. Everything ripped apart in a New York minute. The killer junkies had been high on a previously unknown designer drug called Valkyrie or V. 
After the funeral, I told Alex I would be transferring to the DEA. And it took us three long years to get a break in the Valkyrie case. Then finally, two months ago, some snitch tipped us off that Jack Lapino, a mob boss in the Punchinello crime family, was trafficking. I went undercover and infiltrated the worst mafia family in New York. That ain't easy to do when you're black. I tell you that much. So I went down to the Roscoe Street train station. I came in from the cold and the dark. Outside the city was a cruel monster. I've been slowly working my way from the small town to the big fish, trying to get to the source of the drug. And Alex and BB, who are my only contacts in the DEA, the only ones in this decrepit city who knew I was down here. I called BB on the phone. He said, yeah, um, something, something urgent came up with Jack Lapino. You know, you need to meet with Alex down at the station immediately, Roscoe Street Station. I ain't had a face to face with Alex since I had gone undercover. I really was happy to get a chance to see him. And outside, the mercury was falling fast. It was colder than the devil's heart, raining ice pitchforks as if the heavens were ready to fall. Everyone was run, running for shelter like there was no tomorrow. It didn't get any better when I got to the subway. The feeling hit me like a point blank shot straight to the face. Something wasn't right about this. And my Beretta stirred nervously under my coat. But the train doors had already shut behind me and I was in for the ride. Next stop. Roscoe Street Station and Alex. The station was drenched in gloom. Alex was a ghost nowhere to be seen. Looked like I was going to have to look for him. I went in one of the rooms and seen that one of the transit cops had been killed. Death was in the air at Roscoe Street and I have to find Alex fast. So I snuck up and seen two two guys standing there talking. He said, wasn't Jake supposed to take care of this? He and Mickey are having a too much fun taking, you know, to care of that cop back there. Well, what's the plan? Simple. Gun down every mother-loving thing that get off the train. Sweet. But then the train go already? No idea, man. Let's just wait and see. So these guys seem like they're here to kill me. Just then, another one of those cops came out, and I saw them pull their guns up on them, but I moved quicker than they did, and I put two in both of them. They was out. And all he could do was stand there with his mouth hanging open. And when he finally snapped out of it, after I shook him a little bit, he had, you know, he just barely could get a thank you out. So I said, what's going on here, man? He said, it's a massacre, man. These all thugs just came up out of nowhere. We need to get help. I can make the call from the control room one floor up. Can you take me there? I said, yeah, yeah, whatever, man. Sound good. Come on, follow me. He said, you know, uh, frankly, I'm too scared to go to the control room alone without you and your gun. So um, I'm, I'm really glad that you're here, man. Oh, my goodness. We need to get the power back on to get through the door. So he told me once we got to the control station, he could open up the doors and we can try to see, you know, what's going on here. And maybe get up out of here. So as soon as we got up to the control room, we, he put the code in and went through the door. And he was shot as soon as he went through. The thugs was already in there waiting for him. They didn't know I was there. So when they casually walked up to him, I hurried up and put something up in them real hot, man. 
I laid them down. I went in the control room looking for a phone. And uh, when I did find the phone, of course, they had already ripped the cord out and busted it up real bad. <laughs> I was looking for something, just something, something that looked like, just something that looked like it opened some doors. Or, I tried to find anything in there. I messed around and found the key card. This looked like, you know, what I can use to help me get around the station. So I made my way down, and I realized that I saw, the, um, saw where the guys was headed to. So when I got down to the train platform, I seen that they had jumped down to, uh, to the rails and started making their way down the tunnel. So I followed behind. I seen their footsteps and seen where they dropped some uh, cigarettes. And, you know, criminals always real sloppy. And, you know, these guys left all kind of evidence behind, man. So these just your regular guys from what I could tell. Not no real trained, hired, you know, assassins. I guess they figured they could just send anybody for somebody like me, huh? Now I got to a rusty door. It led to the it led to the abandoned part of the station, closed off since the early 40s. Something was going down at Roscoe Street. It was something big. Like at first I thought they was here for me, but you know what would they be doing down here? Maybe that's why Alex wanted to meet me here. Maybe not, but one way or the other, I'm going to find out. So as I'm making my way, I hear the guys talking to each other and talking a little trash and stuff. One of them said, Lapino, now that's spooky. Jack Lapino, yeah, he's spooky, man. But also, you know, it's, it's like the failure count is rising. Hey, don't joke about it. If I was you, like, <laughs> no, I wouldn't joke about it. Then one of them phone rang and he answered it. And uh, you know, he kinda he kinda froze for a second. And then he hung the phone up. He said, the station ain't safe, y'all. Somebody decided to play hero upstairs. The other guy said, oh, that's all we need, man. So they got real quick into getting to what they was doing. It was a door that had been welded shut a long, long time ago. And they was trying to get that mug open, using the torch, trying to, I guess, re-burn through the welds or whatever. So when they finally got through, they all grouped up together. They said, okay, fellas, the police are on the way. New York's finest going to be here real soon. Just stick to the plan. We got our own private exit route. In and out. Do your thing. Wham, bam, thank you, man. Okay. What's the plan, though? What are they doing? As I made my way through the door, I realized that we were in a bank vault. That we were in a vault that was the size of, it was crazy, it was, this place was huge, man. The vault had to be like, the vault was big enough to throw a party in, and that's exactly what these guys was doing. But you know me, I'm a party crasher. I came in there with my pistols drawn and held them at a gunpoint. But these guys weren't ready to go out without a fight. One of them went for their guns and next thing I know, we trading bullets back and forth. But you know, of course I took them out. These guys were sloppy, man. <laughs> I think it was some of their first time ever even shooting a gun. Then the phone went off. The phone went off inside the vault. And me being the overconfident <laughs> who I am, I picked up the phone. We come to you now, live from the crime scene. Who is this? I said right back at you. This is Deputy Chief Jim Brevoir from the NYPD. You are to cease your criminal activities and surrender immediately. So thing, Jim. Me and the boys been talking, and everybody's real sorry. They'll never do it again. Who is this? And I hung up on him. 
Being placed at the scene of a bank robbery wouldn't have tipped the odds in my favor. The bank robbers left all their tools on the table, big piles of money and things. Judging by the detonators, the crooks had brought enough explosives to send Lady Liberty into orbit. The bank robber's score was left on the table, too. They had been after Acer Corporation bonds. The Acer success story had recently been on every channel and on the cover of every magazine. Wow. I guess I need to remember that, huh? When you see stuff like that, it's never a coincidence. There gotta be some reason why Mafia guys would be after paperwork from a multi-million dollar, soon to be billion dollar corporation. On my way back out the station, I ran into Alex. Hold it, Jack. Jesus, man, you almost gave me a heart attack, man. I almost shot you. Alex, am I glad to see you? What's going on, man? Man, there's dead people everywhere, man. Got more corpses here than the city morgue. I told him it's an armed robbery, a tunnel job, straight through the Roscoe Bank vault, through the old station wall. Is this why? This is Lupino's gig. This is Lupino's doing. Lupino's, man, really? I said, man, you sure know how to pick a place, man. Can you... Can you get through this gate? No, it's locked, man. We gotta get out of here. Just then. I couldn't see the person, but I could see their arm. I could see their hand, and I could see the pistol in their hand. And I saw him shoot Alex from behind. Ow, 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 Alex. There was nothing I could do. He was dead. I could tell by the empty, accusing stare of his eyes. I was frozen until I heard the sirens. I had to leave my friend. There's only one other person that knows I'm undercover. And if he vouches for me, it's going to blow my cover. I'm too close now. I'm too close, I'm closer than I ever been. I gotta keep going, I gotta run for it. Alex had kept me relatively sane for the past three years. Now I didn't know how I felt. Somehow he had stumbled upon something big and ended up stepping on Jack Lupino's toes. Lupino ran his racket of sex, drugs, and contract killings from a sleazy motel and a slum block of tenements. The NYPD was closing in. I could hear the sirens. The well was a crescendo. Lupino thought he could get us by taking out Alex and leaving me to take the fall for it. But all you got, Mr. Lupino, is my attention. And I went for the hotel first. It was a sad old thing with flickering lamps and faded colors. Cheap mobster punks and tired eye prostitutes. I walked straight in, playing at Bogart, like I'd done a hundred times before. Replaced by, you know, it was ran by a couple of murdering mobsters with shark smiles. The Finito Brothers. When I got to their office, they said, Ladies and gentlemen, it's the pain in the butt. Pain to the max. I told him, oh, man, y'all killing me, man. <laughs> did you make that up yourselves? Or did you get some freaking crackhead downstairs to come up with it? But don't answer that. That's a rhetorical question. Now, I got something for the boss, man. Is Lupino around? The first Finito brother said, that kind of depends on who's asking. A friend or a junk squad plant? But don't answer, you know, it's... Uh, one of those, uh, how do you put it, uh, rhetorical questions. Lupino ain't here, but he says bye. Lupino wasn't in this cheap motel. Instead, I ran into the Finito brothers. My cover had been blown. The door slammed shut behind me, and I was dodging bullets like raindrops. The Finito brothers were no slouches. 
but they weren't none for me though. I put them down after a while. And while I was standing over him, a letter on the desk caught my eye. I had met Lupino only once. The gangster ran all his rackets through his right hand man, Benny Garnetti. Garnetti was a high strung whiner on the verge of breaking apart like an over amp energizer bunny. He had the brains to run the business, but he didn't have the guts to do it. Always falling short, taking his frustration out on underage addicts and called girls. The letter said, the video goes down at your hotel. Jack's exact words, quote, Vinny, you're in charge of this one, unquote. Rico Morte is coming to see it through. Anything goes wrong and everybody's going to get dead. Goes double for you. Treat this guy real good. Anything he wants, you give him. Don't screw this up or it's finito. You're finitos. A video meant added security, locked doors, and lots of nervous thugs with itchy trigger fingers. I had seen nothing coming in, but that didn't mean it hadn't been here. Rico Morte was a regular Kaiser Serze. A spook story told to keep the apes in line. 313, the finitos had scribbled Morte's room number on the note's margins. I could hear the thugs outside the door, banging on the door, calling for the bosses. But they ain't know they was dead. And the only thing waiting for them on the other side of this door was me. As I made my way through the hotel, I came across a TV that was playing the news. The mayor stated that Valkyrie represents a clear danger to New York and called for drastic actions to eliminate the problem. On today's top story, the Valkyrie crisis worsens with the murder of DEA Special Agent Alex Balder. Special Agent Balder has been shot repeatedly from point-blank range, and the gunman, the gunman, has been identified as Jack Payne. The noose is sure to tighten around this fugitive criminal as more NYPD units join the search to apprehend him. I had just got my 15 minutes of fame. I came across another TV. Tonight, the city's fight against the nightmare drug Valkyrie took a turn for the worse as DEH Special Agent Alex Balder was found brutally slain at the Roscoe Street subway station. The suspect was seen leaving the site only moments after the shots had been fired, and the NYPD is currently in pursuit of Jack Payne, a repeated felon believed to be armed and extremely dangerous. And now the weather. Now this is the worst winter storm in recorded history. It's just continuing to pound this city. When I got to Morte's room, I reached to see if the door was unlocked. It was. I opened up the door and jumped out the way just in time because he had a shotgun hooked to him. As soon as that door opened, that shotgun blasted. I had all of half a second to get out of the way. When I got into the room, he was gone. <laughs> but I saw he had a letter, though, sitting on the table. Our investigation had turned up nothing to link Angelina Put Punchinello, the head of the Punchinello family, to Valkyrie. And all tracks had ended with Jack Lupino. The letter in Morte's room was signed by the Don himself. It was the first hint that the Kingpin knew what was brewing inside his syndicate. The letter said, The trouble you got into after the Chicago screw-up, the Punchinello family bailed you out. You had been waiting for a chance to pay us back. One of our trusted boys has a monkey the size of King Kong on his back. We need your special skills for backup on a major deal. You know, collecting evidence had gotten old a few hundred bullets back. I was already so far past the point of no return, I couldn't remember what it looked like when I went past it. I saw something sticking out from under the bed, though. I wanted to go check it out. It looked like a book, a diary. I bumped into a switch that started the bed to vibrate. I was glad I didn't see whatever went down in this room before I got here. 
but the diary belonged to a look like a prostitute named Candy Dawn. The read would have made a vice cop blush. It said, had talks with the mystery hag over the phone again. Sent her the latest one-eyed outfit tape. As long as the hag keeps paying for the tapes, the old man could come and see me every day for all I care. Huh. I see she had a nice little side gig going. Making X-rated flicks of her and her clients and selling them to the highest bid. It'd get her killed if her V-fix for the day didn't do it to her first. As I made my way through the hotel, I went past another TV. A winter storm warning is in effect in the whole tri-state area. They say both freezing rain and heavy snow continues. Many roadways are closed ahead and people are advised to stay indoors. The severe blizzard has ravaged New York for three days now with no end in sight. We have been snowed from the start of the Valkyrie case. And the forecast said there was plenty more where that came from. But the snowbound city was on my side. Less chance of innocent bystanders getting caught in the crossfire. And I know anybody that will come out in this blizzard, they can't be out to do any good. I took the elevator down to the basement. I know sometimes that's where the guys would like to hang out in this little bar that they had in the bar. As I got off the elevator, I seen a dead man tied to a chair. The chair was laid out in the floor to, uh, the boiler room. The murder weapon was a baseball bat, now laying in a pool of drying blood next to a newspaper folded open on a Captain Baseball Bat Boy comic strip. While I moved through the basement, I came across a stash. Suitcases, duffel bags, boxes, crates, uh, pallets, drugs. A lifetime ago, this would have went down as a narcotics arrest. All this dirty money. The transparent cylinders glowed green, full of Valkyrie. Making my way through the basement, I finally got to the bar. When I got to the bar, I seen Rico running his mouth on the phone to somebody. <laughs> Two mad dog killers ready to murder each other. And they step into the next room, and I'm thinking, yeah, now they got to do it. But no, they sit down in front of the TV and solve their differences in a kung fu fighting video game. I tell you, I was so depressed, I strangled them both with the video game cables. I know, I told you, I'm a bad man. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I walked up behind Rico Morte, huh? Big time hustler. Who? He went for his gun, but I was already at mine. After I took out Morte, I kept moving, hoping to find God needed, or even better, the Pino. As I made my way through, I saw an old telephone switchboard in the back room of the reception area, the kind that made phone tapping child's play. It wasn't hard to picture a fat pimp sweating with headphones on listening to his woman talk dirty with other guys, talking over a web of party line, the blood veins in New York. But right now there was a different set of moans and groans going on. I could hear Vinny, are you freaking kidding me? He's just one lousy cop. You better be freaking kidding me. Whack him. What's the freaking problem? Hello, answer me, hello. I heard him over the switchboard. The word was out. A deadly virus released into the city's corrupt circulatory system. Something wicked this way comes. Jack Payne at large. Turn around, 
walk away, blow time. That would have been a smart thing to do. I guess I wasn't that smart. Lupino's tenement buildings were a seedy hangout for all kinds of sleaze. A liquor store, a pawn shop, a laundromat full of mobster bookies and loan shots. The list went on. Now how and why? You know, any of it was a mystery to me. But they knew I was a cop. And they knew I was coming. And they were going to get real trigger happy about it. But I got to see Lupino's hangout all lit up. A bomb went off, turning the snow into liquid gold. A pillar of fire lifted the remains of a car straight up into the air. The flames were highlighted on the hood of a black Mercedes Benz as it coasted down the street, real slow, like the driver didn't have a worry in the world. I got a good look at the man riding shotgun. It was Vladimir, the head of the local Russian mob the flying Don Ponchinello suit. The ringing in my ears was the sound of a mob war being waged. Another bomb exploded inside the closest slum building. It was a lucky break for me. The goons inside were spooked, but luck always came with a price tag. More bombs could still be ticking inside, and the cops would already be on their way. Jack Lapino's suit was on the top floor. Well, at least it used to be before the explosive makeover. When I checked out the building, I seen the whole thing was rigged with explosives. But I heard a payphone go off and I went to go check it out. I don't know why I could have been anybody, some junkie calling to meet his dealer, but I went and picked it up. When I picked it up, I heard, am I speaking with Mr. Payne? I say, who want to know? My name is Alfred Woden. You must hurry. The police are on their way. Tell me something I don't know. They know you're there. How do they know that? And what's it to you anyway? I will contact you again. And he hung up on me. Now the cops have got their sirens singing in that off-key harmony of a manic depressive choir. And I had a few minutes while the SWAT team would go through their usual routine. By the time they had busted in, I needed to be long gone. Max Payne, this is Deputy Chief Jim Brevard from the NYPD. Drop your weapons and come out with your hands above your head. <sighs> this guy, man. Making my way through the building, I came across another one of those stash spots. And I seen another letter, and suddenly it all made sense. The bombs, the Russian mob boss making an appearance in person. Cogniti was his usual self, all talk and no walk. After I hit, the Russian mob was only a couple, only, only had a couple of guns left. And they can be bought. There's no freaking way he asked the Gus to try anything after that. That's another letter that Cogniti had wrote. As it turned out, the Russian had plenty of guns. And one thing you can count on, you push a man too far, and sooner or later you're going to start pushing back. When I got to the building where Lupino's place was, I came to the door, knocked on it, said pizza delivery. A little slit opened up in the top of the door. The guy behind the door said, never seen you before. Buzz off, freaking joker. The guy closed the hatch and I made my way around looking for another entrance, a window, or anything. I couldn't find nothing. But then I seen the guy coming down the street. Looked like he might have been one of them. You know, like I said, anybody who outside today ain't outside, you know, up to any good, man. They got to be up to no good. I ran up on him real quick with the pistol. He said, no, don't shoot, don't shoot, I ain't. I said, do you know them clowns down at the laundry? Who, me? No. You no good to me then. So I picked my gun up at him again. He said, well, what? No, 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 the the laundry. Yeah, 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 I know them, I know them. Well, you need to get me in there. Okay, okay, I got you, I got you. So now, me and this guy, you know, we start making our way down to the dang laundry, man. So when me and him get back to the door, he knocks on the door and the guy opens the slit again. He said, hey, it's me, man. Open up, man. Let me in, quick. 
Not so fast. What's the password? John who? Come on, man. Look. John who? Hey, come on here, man. He ran in screaming. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. It's pain. It's pain. <laughs> like, I didn't know he was going to do that in the first place. After I took them all out, I looked around to try to get an idea of what they had been doing in there. The usual guns, drugs, money sitting everywhere. And the TV was on the news. The news said, New York City is in a crisis tonight with reports of Valkyrie-related gang war in the streets of the Bronx. Apparently, Jack Payne wanted for questioning in connection with the slaying of DEA Special Agent Alex Balder earlier tonight is waging a one-man war against his former partners in crime. Among the listed casualties so far are notorious Mafia members, Joey and Virgilio Finito, as well as Rico Morte, himself a fugitive from the law and a suspect for several murders in the Chicago area. The NYPD has been placed on full alert, and a citywide APB is put out on Jack Payne. Deputy Chief Jim Bavor has promised to take whatever steps necessary to bring him to justice. What those steps may be remains to be seen. I was tired of the news, so I turned the channel. When I turned the channel, it was a weird show, something I'd never seen before. A man said, I don't want to go back there. It's the last place that I want to go, the last place I want to end up. But that's where I always end up anyway. Only, it's not me talking to the pink flamingo, but someone who looks the part down, down to the finest detail, except that he's evil. I'm hiding in the shadows, watching it all unfold. Mirrors, mirrors are more fun than television. Somehow I notice, just don't ask me how. And I, not me, but my double, nods and smirks at this like it was the funniest thing in the world. And then something goes wrong, and suddenly they know I'm there, hand behind them, and they both turn to look at me with cold eyes. The flesh of fallen angels, I have no idea what that means. And that's when I always wake up to my own scream in that bright lilied white hospital room strapped to my bed. Well, that was interesting and all, but I turned the TV off because I could kind of see myself being that guy. If I didn't get to the bottom of this, this junk was going to drive me crazy. I still had thoughts about my wife and baby girl. Every second I wasn't getting shot at, my mind was on them. I finally, finally found God needed. I could hear him screaming through the door, crying like usual. What are you standing around here for? They're bombing us. What are you doing? You're doing nothing. That's what you're doing. This is war, freaking war. I kicked the door open. Vinny God needed. <laughs> Just the man I've been killing to see. Pain? Freaking fed. I knew that there was some screw here about you. What do you think you're doing? You're a freaking cop. You ain't got squat on us. You just can't come in here waving your piece like it meant something. Right then I had to put one in him. Pow, put one right in his stomach. Ah, my God, you shot me. Ah, oh, you're dead, Payne. What are you waiting for? Kill him, you apes. Kill him. With pleasure, boss. <laughs> I got needy bail. I made like Chow Young fat. And I was dodging bullets and firing back like it was nothing. After I took the thugs, I seen a piece of paper on his desk. The letter was addressed to Don Puccinello, but Vinny had the nerve, you know, he never had the nerve to finish it. It said, Jack's gone voodoo, 
Just the other night, he shot Dino because he wanted to see what his brains looked like splattered on the wall. He's a freaking mad dog. We're running out of men and business fast. Cogniti had been living in mortal fear of his boss, Jack Luke, because Jack Lupino was a straight psycho who ain't getting crazy about a minute. Vinny Garniti was running scared. He could run, but with a bullet in his stomach like a broken bottle of Tabasco, he was quickly running out of time. He knew where his boss was, and I want to square things up with Jack Lupino. Carniti would be moving fast. And I don't know about angels, but it's fear that gives men wings. I finally had him cornered on a rooftop. I could hear the train coming below us. The man was desperate. He jumped down and landed on top of the train. But as desperate as he was, I was even more desperate, and I jumped down on top of that train with him. This was my second train ride of the night. And the way it started didn't promise to be anything better than the last one. Freezing wind was tearing at my face like sandpaper and razors. Ice hard and slick under my hands and feet. And somewhere in the background, the well of silence. The city howling after me. New York sped by on fast forward. Dark rooftops, water towers, and a dead forest of antennas and chimneys. All a blur. When the train he was riding slowed down, he made his move. And I made my move right behind him. Here come the helicopters. NYPD, you on the roof. Drop your weapon and lie down. I repeat, drop your weapon and lay face down. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. I kept following God needed. He was moving. And just then he ran into the spot. Must have been another one of their stash houses. I could hear him screaming through the door. It's pain. He's coming down the stairs. Shoot him. Shoot the cop. No problem, boss. We got him. We got to be rich, man. Freaking rich. Even richer than the wise guy, man. Freaking, freaking rich. <laughs> I don't know who put the bounty out on me, but he got a better chance of me turning myself in for that money before one of these guys claim it. Again, the TV was on the news. I guess all mob guys do is watch the news, trying to figure out which one of their partners is dead or who I killed last. Huh? I saw Bravora on the TV again. Jack Payne has nowhere left to go. We're very close to capturing him. You get a full statement then, but right now I got better things to do, ma'am. <laughs> well, I figured Bavora to be one of the good guys. I guess fate had just dropped us on different sides in this. But when it came to capturing me, he was way out of his league. I had already dished the cops a couple of rooftops back for now. I kept making my way through the building, following Gognita's blood trail. He's coming, I can hear him, ready. Keep your gun, get your gun, get it on point, man, get ready. Payne's gonna bust through that door with murder in his eyes. And it's either him or it's us, and I for one, I'm gonna pump that SOB full of lead. You need a forklift to carry the coffin to the grave. <laughs> These guys, man. So after I took care of them, I finally got Gogniti down to an alley with no way out. He finally started running out of steam. I gotta get a little man some props, man. I ain't think somebody like him would make it this far with a bullet in it. <laughs> he ran out of steam in a dead alley with steam boiling out of the sewer grates like all the fires of hell were burning high beneath us. It was shakedown time. I'ma ask you one time, one time only, 
Where's Lupino? Screw you. Bad start, Vinny. Ah, ah, police brutality, police brutality. Yeah, you know, I rate pretty high on that. Now, come on, tell me what I asked you. Now, I already told you I wasn't going to ask more than once. You just can't, you just can't hurt me in cold blood. Yeah, man, look, you just keep telling yourself that. Listen good, Candy, man. You know, I ain't going to be nobody fall guy. I want to know where your boss is hiding. So I put that pistol right up to his head. There was no glory in this. I ain't asked for this crap. Trouble had come to me in big dark swarms. The good and the just were just like gold dust in the city. I had no illusions. I was not one of them. I was no hero. Just me and a gun and a crook. My options had decreased to a singular course. Just then I pulled the trigger but I ain't hear nothing but a click. That was enough to scare him so bad I think he used it on himself. I tell you, I tell you, just don't hurt me no more. Lupino's at Ragnarok, the nightclub. Book me, take me in, haul me to freaking jail. Just please don't hurt me no more. You're right to be read at your funeral. I threw the handcuffs at him and walked away. <laughs>